tend to casually throw around the term, winner takes all. If you've been following along, you already know the stakes. Five months, seven races. An entire season of World Cup downhill is about to come down to three minutes and 32 seconds. So pick a side. Things are about to get interesting. You know I run the streets in a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. Pride up in my environment. Always keep it cheap. You know I run the streets in a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. Yeah. I need to get in the mood of the interview. Last interview of the year. Oh. Let's make it insane. Insane. <laughs> On any given weekend, there are around 13 dialects spoken in the World Cup pits, but numbers are the universal language. Sensations and emotions can prove hard to calculate. Numbers are easy. And when it comes to racing, no digit is more desirable than the number one. I've only had number one once in my life. Feel good. Oh my god. It's a big, big weight to carry. You're number one of the World Cup, so you're leading the series. You know, we had that first World Cup, which was rained out, and it's been a bit of a battle to get back up. I'm sitting in second in points now. I think it's close enough to where if I beat Greg that I should win the title. Oh, I don't think about the plate. I just, um, I just focus on the race. Yeah, it's, it's some, you know, I guess you, in the back of your mind you're always thinking about it. My mindset coming in this weekend is win. This year was good to see that Aaron didn't have it at all. Greg had it all year. It's just not an easy thing to do. Having the number one play is one thing, and holding on to it's another. The track looks pretty insane. I think it'll probably be the best track of the season so far. The dirt's really good. The track's really wide, like 10 meters in some sections, so you can pick a lot of different lines. Like this, hit that rock, and then hit that big rock. Bam, bam, corner. It's hard to pick the right one, and people on the first day were just lost. It just makes it more fun, and I feel like it plays into my strengths. I have a pretty good eye for lines and lining up tracks. And then that just like just yeah. smooth it, ride that dark yeah. dirt. If you kind of mess up a tiny bit, you yeah. can actually get up high. Get up high, yeah, yeah. Holy yeah. <laughs> Yeah, basically like that. Once all the riders have found the fastest line, the, the fastest line gets so rough you're trying to decide whether you need to be like a couple inches to the right, a couple inches to the left. Just riding where it's clean. That's so hard to do and Aaron is super good for this. It's an exciting overall this year on both sides because still don't really know who's going to win. Other than Finn, Finn's won. <laughs> This season's been pretty amazing. Going into Elite next year, I should be as prepared as I can be, and I guess that's a good thing. This season, I think, was almost more challenging through the injuries, just because you feel like you have a lot more to lose, but I'm definitely grateful for kind of all the good things that have happened. Me and Nicole makes our bid to become World Cup champion. is going to be your 2017 UCI Downhill World Cup over a wheel. It's Popon who does it for the first time in a 
Saint Korea. And will that time now be good enough to see a take the win? Seagrave has definitely put a run together today when she needed to. She's gonna go fastest. Tani Seagrave takes the win. It's amazing to finish a World Cup season with no injuries, three years, <laughs> and winning the overall in the same time is crazy. It's better everywhere, but I don't know why. On some massive flattened hills, yeah, yeah, yeah. goes like straight to the bottom. Okay. I mean, one click will yeah. only help on the low speed. Just uh, that put that small chip. Now you know how the bike is working. I'm not saying it's gonna take care of all the problem you're having, but it's just gonna maintain all the good stuff spots, but see if we can just stop it from moving a little bit too fast too soon. Okay, we see. The track is totally destroyed. So you have to find new things and try to like adapt the bike to. So that's why it's a little bit the question right now. I feel like I was struggling all morning with the bike. It's gonna be total battlefield. Like everyone's gonna be. It's gonna be sick. Louis Bruni now. It's been a very up and down year. Point three back then. So Bruni's certainly in touch. He is absolutely flying here in Valasole. Super Bruni. He goes second! Many World Cup seasons would be forced to bore you with the complex calculations on who has to do what to win the title. Here, not so much. Greg Minard versus Aaron Gwynn. The scenario is simple. Win today, win the title. Greg Mina is a legend. To me, he's the best of all time. Aaron is a f***ing machine. <laughs> Greg Mina, one run away from being World Cup champion. He's going to be pushing hard again. He's up by 1.4, where you put this man in a corner, and it definitely brings out the very best in him. Mina seems to find speed when he needs it. He's out, he's off the track! He is out of the track! Wow! It's a minaster for Greg Minar! This whole week's been tough. You know, I crashed and wrapped my bike around a pole. I had a mechanical issue at the fork, and then the tire popped off the rim. I don't really accept that when it's a mechanical failure, that shouldn't happen, but it happens. That's just racing. It's too dark to see. Close your eyes and be free. He doesn't look like he's hanging about or taking it easy, Aaron Gwynn here. No, he's not, of course he's not. He's up by 1.669 then. No way, look at the speed of the man down here. Time to World Cup winner already. A couple of turns and Aaron Gwynn. He's had his best share of bad luck this year today, though. Aaron Gwynn then comes down to the line. The sun shines in the Valley of the Sun. Gwynn is your 2017 UCI Downhill World Cup champion for the fifth time. It's been a crazy year. This has definitely been a unique title for me, but unlike any of my other ones, for sure, with all the ups and downs. And um, I'm just soaking in the moment. It's pretty awesome. Fourth place, riding the specialized gravity, Lauren Wadden. Now's the part of the story typically full of deep thoughts on the ephemeral nature of bicycle racing. This year, I was um, losing my focus on different things. Sometimes you find excuses when you don't train any well enough. I feel like I've been able to be consistent, but not consistent at the first spot. 
it takes a lot of work and um, maybe maturity, so it's coming. The music swells. Splice in some emotional slow-mo shots of our protagonists and other assorted support characters. Oh, please. We've come too far to go out like that. I'm a kingpin dog, bow down. Watch out for the snakes and the rats, it's a doggy dog. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, yes, sorry, it's broken. Man, <laughs> <laughs> city, couple cops, I low bang, bro. Got bricks, got grams, what you need, let me know. Hold up, you know I keep the homie right beside me. Man, It's been a sick, sick season one of Fast Life, and uh, I would like to thank Red Bull TV, Specialized, Boombox for everything, and I'm looking forward to season two, so uh, everyone loved it, so season two has to be there. And I hope you'll be there next year. I feel like uh, Downhill has the best series now, so stay tuned and uh, follow the Fast Life. Yes. <laughs>